This is a kai apple. It's a native of Africa. The fruit is used for cordials, dyes, chutneys, jams and jellies. It has a refreshing tartness and the riper they are, the sweeter they are. It's got bite but it's beautiful and juicy. Mm -hmm. hey, watch out for the spice. But... Pretty spectacular, aren't they? It's loaded. And look, look. As if it's as if we're going to have fruit. Look at the fruit. The bushes are so thorny that if you plant them close together in a row, they form a very useful living fence. Mm. Just look at these thorns. Here's some fruit in a twig of the kai apple plant, Dovialis caffra. As you can see, the fruits are golden and small, and the branches are very thorny. They're so sharp that you can just sort of see how sharp they are. They're like a weapon. You impale an apple on them. Just found some little scrubby apples that had fallen from the tree. And as you can see, these thorns are quite vicious. I think even goats would have trouble eating these leaves. Another use could be if you were out in the wild and didn't have any awls for boring holes into things, you could probably take off these thorns and actually use them to bore a hole in something. Here's a branch of kai apple without any fruit on it. The fruit's here in the bowl. You can see the thorns on this. And you can use these thorns as tools. I'm going to cut one off. And I'm going to use it to pierce a hole in fabric so that I can stitch the fabric. The fabric I'm using isn't a normal textile. It's actually a piece of kelp, would you believe? Kelp's one of those multi-purpose plants. It's medicinal, it's edible. The people actually make things out of it because when it dries, it goes really hard like leather and lasts for years and years and years. And people make toys out of it and they make lampshades out of it. And when the light shines through the lampshades, it looks rather lovely, it gives an amber glow. So, to start off with, I'm just going to take the side pieces off the kelp. You'd be surprised how hard it goes after it dries. This kelp is still moist. That's why it's still flexible like that. And I'm going to stitch two pieces together. So let's pretend we're out in the wilderness. We want to stitch together two pieces of soft leather, but we don't have a needle. So using the thorn from the kai apple, we can just pierce holes through. And then after we've pierced enough holes, we can stitch the two pieces together.
So there are two pieces of kelp stitched together using an awl to pierce the holes. And as I say, you could use that same technique with leather. I'm going to make kai apple jam using some extra pectin made from our own lemons. So the first step is to pick some lemons. I'm going to extract some pectin from those lemons I picked a moment ago. Lemons are full of pectin. There's pectin in the skin, in the flesh, in the pith, the white part. Pectin's very useful when you want to make jam because it helps the jam to set. I'm going to boil these lemons and then strain them and then I'm going to boil down the resulting liquid till it goes thick and that liquid will be full of pectin. setting it to boil. I'm just going to boil this down a little bit. Now the pectin has boiled down, or at least the it's reduced from all that boiling and steaming. So I'm going to pour it out. You can see how it's gone all syrupy. That syrupiness shows that there's pectin in that water, pectin that came out of the lemons. There's some of it there. To make kai apple jam, you take a kilo of washed kai apples, including some that are a little bit unripe because they've got more pectin in them. As you can see, these ones are a little bit greener than the others. Take the stems off them. That one's another greenish one. But I didn't know whether I'd have enough that aren't ripe to give the jam enough pectin, which is why I've made some extra pectin with lemons. Hopefully the lemon flavour won't be too overpowering. I'm starting with a kilo of washed kai apples, a kilo of sugar and half a cup of water. So instead of just plain water, I'm using the pectin liquid. It should make the jam solidify pretty well. And now bring it to the boil. Well, I've got a bit of a confession to make. And that is that I didn't make the pectin according to all the recipes on the internet that I found. I didn't discover this until afterwards, but apparently you're not supposed to use the yellow part of the lemon just the white part of the lemon to boil it up to make your pectin. The reason being that the yellow part is uh, the part that contains a lot of lemon flavour and it might conflict with the fruit that you're using for your jam. However, I made pectin with the whole lemons, the seeds, the flesh, the white part, the yellow part, everything, and it turned out really well. 
uh, admittedly my apple jam is pretty tangy, but it's tangy in a good way. So I think that it's a success story, but maybe if you make your own pectin at home, maybe you should scrape off the yellow part of the lemon before you make it. Anyway, While it's been simmering away, I've been stirring it occasionally so that it doesn't stick. Now, fruit, the fruit is soft, so I'm going to add the sugar and stir that in, gradually stir it in. These fruits are quite tart, they're quite zingy, so they do need sugar, especially for jam, because it helps to preserve the jam. Now, just continue to simmer the fruit and sugar until the jam sets. So the next step is just to push it through a fairly coarse sieve. There are seeds in these little fruits, but they're very soft seeds and you can eat them when you eat the fruit fresh. I've already tasted it and it tastes beautiful. It actually tastes a bit like a sort of marmalade very very zingy. We hoard our old jars for occasions like this. We've got old jam jars, old pasta sauce jars, ones I don't even recognize, probably olives or something, but you've got to sterilize them before you put the jam in. So I've just oiled the jug and I'm going to tip a little bit into each jar. I want to put it all in at once because the glass might break. I also need to I like to sterilize the lids for my own peace of mind. Boiling water kills just about everything. So I might need two jugs for, but that's okay. Fill them right up to the brim. Make sure all the germs are gone. And when you put the jam in, the jam's going to be hot too. And that will be another reason why the germs probably won't survive. You know the jam is ready to be bottled when if you put a little bit on a saucer it sort of um, looks fairly solid it doesn't run too much it runs a little bit not too much as it cools down it will run less and less so you just kind of have to use a cook's wisdom to judge if that's set and I think that's set to make sure that the jam's really hot when it goes into the jars. I put it back over the heat for a little bit longer, warmed it up, it's really, really hot. It's actually just about boiling. I've emptied the water out of the jars and now it's time to put the jam into the jars bit by bit again so that we don't break the glass. Filling the jars almost to the top, leaving a small air space at the top. Uh, I'm not going to 
to fill all these jars, but that's okay. It's better to have too many jars and not enough. Putting the lids on straight away means that the jam cools with the lid on and that creates a vacuum which holds the lid tightly on and stops germs from going in. Ouch, they are hot. Ouch. Now all that remains is to let the jam cool and put labels on it and dates. It's still hot, but I can't wait to taste it on a crumpet. be a lot less runny when it cools down. It's actually really quite hot. It's a beautiful colour. Mmm, that's beautiful. Mmm. It's sort of a bit more like a between a jam and a marmalade but it's well worth eating just to prove that the jam really does set beautifully solid I'll show you this is the next day and look how chunky and solid and stiff it is it's just a lovely soft tender jelly like consistency exactly as jam should be. This time, instead of using the kai fruit for jam or marmalade or chutney, I'm going to dye with it. So, so I'm going to take some white cotton. I've got two pieces here, one for comparison. I'm going to put this cotton fabric into the pot with the kai apples and I'm going to let that simmer along with the kai apples for a while. My efforts at dyeing cotton with kai apples weren't wildly successful but they weren't completely unsuccessful either. I tried a few different methods, including washing in vinegar, washing in salt, washing in bicarb soda, and there was success, I'll show you. Here's the undyed cotton, pretty snowy white colour, and here is the dyed cotton, dyed with kai apple. You can see there's a definite color change. I think if I really knew what I was doing and used all the correct natural dyeing techniques and probably boiled it for a bit longer there would be more color but it's not a bad color it's a lovely pale gold.